Hey everyone, Melissa here. Today I am filming this video out of Dragon Man Museum. We are in front of the medic display. I thought it would be a little bit more fitting than just me in the store uh, because today I wanted to talk about just being proactive in your medical uh, supplies um, instead of reactive for when emergency strikes and there is an injury present and you need to have something to help them out with. Obviously, if you're in the store, you're kind of like doing errands and stuff, you're not gonna have everything needed. So I'm gonna talk about some substitutes that you can use for like a tourniquet, um, for, you know, some occlusive dressings and so forth. This is some stuff that I actually have on hand in the store, in my classroom, on the shooting range, in my house, in my car. I always have a mixture of a lot of this stuff. A couple of things that you should always have on hand, which I'm gonna get into here in a second. So I'm gonna give you guys a couple of different scenarios so you can kind of be a little bit prepared based off of the, the severity of the injury. So if someone gets hurt and there is um, a laceration, okay, on the leg, on the arms, you are really gonna first uh, make sure you are safe uh, you want to you can't help other people unless you yourself can uh you know you're safe and you're helping yourself then you want to immediately assess the severity of the situation call 911 um, or ha have someone else call 911 immediately and then try to now figure out what you need to stabilize the person who got injured hopefully you have some essential supplies on hand to treat the individual so what I always recommend, first and foremost, probably going to want to put gloves on. If there's blood, you really don't want to get any diseases and stuff, and you want to make sure that you are not contracting anything, so you want to definitely put some gloves on. Okay, after that, you're just going to really have some hydrogen peroxide. You're going to want to like clean that off. Um, as severe as the injury might be and as hard as it might be to look at, this will kind of clear that off, uh, clean off and kill any bacteria that's there. And then you're gonna get some gauze. So if it, um, I'm gonna talk about arterial uh, wounds in a second or arterial bleeds. But if it's just a laceration, someone got cut on their arm, um, it's not an immediate artery on the back of their leg, you're going to get some gauze. So these are like gauze patches in here. Um, a lot of your first aid kits should come with them. They're in these packets. I actually bought this entire wound care kit. It has the um, gauze plus the actual rolls, the gauze rolls that you can now roll around it. So you're gonna apply some gauze. If you don't have gauze, you can use like paper towels, um, you know, your shirt or something like that that can really just sort of absorb the blood and try to stop the, ble the bleeding. You're gonna definitely apply pressure, probably tell the person who's injured if they are capable to hold their hand there and apply a lot of pressure. And then just wrap it with some gauze wrap or if you have, um, I don't know, if you don't have anything to wrap it with, just tell them to hold it there and hold it tight and apply pressure. If it continues to bleed, just put on some, some more um, towels or anything that you have nearby that can really absorb the blood and apply pressure until you can get them into the car and their friend can probably drive them to um, you know, the emergency room. I have some tape here, so you can get the wraps and then you can tape it. Um, so that's gonna be basically like a laceration. Okay, um, so um, hydrogen peroxide, the gauze, gauze pads, and apply a lot of pressure. Um, if it is a arterial bleed, so you got blood really coming out very quickly. Um, these can be very severe. This could be maybe on your abdominals, neck, um, you know, any sort of arteries, your femoral, uh, near your leg. So that is going to be a severe case. You want to call 911 immediately, and then you're probably going to definitely want to put on gloves and then grab your tourniquet. The tourniquet is going to go above the wound. You want to cut off the blood flowing from the heart. Then you're going to wrap it. So this is a Cat Gen 7 and essentially how it works. And you can really use any sort of substitute. If you don't have a tourniquet, you can use your belt. You can use your shoelaces. You can use anything that can really cut off any pressure. So this guy will oh, just opens up here. And then let's say my wound is down here or right here. I am going to put this all the way up here. Okay, I'm gonna tighten it. Okay, Velcro that in. And then this basically just turns and I'm gonna keep turning it until it cuts off that blood flow. 
So this will just keep turning right here and you can actually just push it in right in there. Okay, just like that. So you wanna to continue to turn until, you know, you really don't, you, you start to see the blood kind of stop, okay? Um, so definitely get a tourniquet. It's one of the most useful pieces that you can have, medical supplies that you can definitely have. And it really will come in handy. I say, I think they said that more people could survive some of these emergency situations if more people just knew how to use a tourniquet, um, especially a tourniquet substitute. Okay, so if you can actually find where the bleed is coming from uh, in the artery, you know, you can, you can try to just pinch it um, and stop the actual bleed from, from coming out and pinch the artery to stop um, because otherwise they will lose a lot of blood and, your, and time is really of essence at that point. Um, definitely make sure you're wearing gloves. You can try to put a lot of gauze in there. You're actually probably gonna use a lot of gauze and actually try to stuff the area um, and apply a lot of pressure and really get a lot of that gauze in there while using the tourniquet, okay? If it is some sort of abdominal bleed, again, gauze, apply a lot of pressure. The tourniquets, can't really put a tourniquet on a whole body, so you just have to apply a lot of pressure, time, very of essence, and hope that the ambulance gets there immediately. Um, probably lay them down um, so that they're not standing, they don't pass out and so forth. Ask them questions, make sure that they're still aware. Last is a puncture wound to the chest. So it's actually called a tension pneumothorax. And essentially, if you have a puncture wound, you can stop it or help to save yourself some time if you have occlusive dressings. So in my bag that I carry to the range, or and also in the store, I have a ton of these occlusive dressings. And, oh, they're right here. So this essentially, and there's some in this kit, this is actually made by Dark Angel Medical. These will essentially go over the sucking um, chest wound and it will sort of cut off the air from flowing into the chest, eliminating the potential of the lungs collapsing, putting pressure on the heart and you eventually die from actually a heart attack. So that's what is happening there. So you essentially just wanna cut off that airflow. You wanna turn them to a resting recumbent position. Um, so to see if the if it was an in and out puncture wound, because then you're gonna wanna put an occlusive dressing on the front and then also put one on the back. This can also be called a flutter valve. Um, once you put it on, you kinda just wanna like open up a corner, allow some air to escape, put it back um, sealed tight, and then just keep on doing that probably about maybe every minute or so. Um, and try to wait there until the ambulance gets there. Substitutes for occlusive dressings could just be plastic bags, your credit card, your driver's license, anything that's plastic that doesn't allow air to escape out of. Okay, your shirt, air is gonna go through that. So you really don't wanna use any sort of cloth. All right, well, that is pretty much it. It sums up every part of your body for the most part. Um, so some things that you should always have on hand is probably gloves, a tourniquet, some gauze, hydrogen peroxide, and the occlusive dressings. So um, if you really just wanna like kind of narrow it down to some essential things that you should have, but go out, make sure you're prepared, get the supplies before emergency strikes, um, because then you're gonna be frantic, trying to figure out what to do and what to use. So definitely be prepared, and I'm sure the person who gets injured will really thank you for that, for saving their life. All right, well, that's it for the video. Very short, very sweet. I wish I had like some patience to test this all on um, and show you guys in action, but I don't. Um, I guess I could use these guys, but I think they're a little far gone. Anyways, that is it. So thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video.